Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Happy Friday, beer geeks. All right. (laughs) <laughs> Brad and I are going to be socially awkward today because we're in we're here in person doing another podcast together whereas usually we do this in very different parts of the UK yeah and I, feel, I always feel like it's easier talking on the phone well, you don't like looking at my eye beautiful co- face while eye talk. contact's difficult <laughs> I could contact's just stare at the wall while this happens rather than yeah, look yeah, at yeah. you while I speak to you would that be better uh yes I'll just I'll face this way yeah you'll just sound terrible but who cares um, eh <laughs> As long as I feel okay. Exactly, yeah. So, welcome to the Socially Awkward Friday 5pm. I hope you've got a beer in your hand. Uh, Brad was drinking a Siren Tickle Monster, an 11% beer with mango and cedarwood, at about half 11 this morning? Yeah, and uh, half 6 this morning, I woke up with a terrible hangover from Johnny's... uh book to whoa 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 so that makes it sound like i dragged you to the dog and bell uh, it was very much the other way around i had to show you my favorite south london boozer mate you did and it was a beautiful a beautiful boozer there yeah. was some live uh, well, trad, irish music trad, trad jazz trad, so, trad no, jazz. sorry not jazz trad folk music trad folk music so yeah, it was yeah. accordions piano and lots yeah. of fiddles that dude was like going for it on the keyboard wasn't he yeah and there, there's really hear him, a, right? like a ginger hair guy that i don't yeah. think stopped playing when everyone else was like he kept going i'm gonna stop he just yeah he's like the energizer bunny of the uh trad folk world yeah and the rest were like aldi batteries yeah you know they, they started they started at i think 8 30 and what time did we leave we left at uh well, we got kicked out about quarter past twelve, and they were pretty much playing till almost then, right? Yeah. So what's that? Eight, nine, ten, and like four hours. See, this is the joy of actually being in the same room as Brad because I can watch his brain work as he does the maths now. It was they did a long, a long ass set, but it's good. It's a great boozer. Uh, you come down to the the pickle festival in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, I might. I'm like, you don't like pickles, yeah, yeah. though, you were saying. No, not really so into pickles. You're there for the chutneys. I'm there for the the atmosphere. Oh, okay. I like and the, the smell of And pickle. the smell of vinegar. I like right. the smell of vinegar. <laughs> Did you see the photo the, that's come out this week of Adam Sander walking around New York with a jar of pickles? Even yeah. Straight out of the can. Uh, jar. It's a look. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a lifestyle. I respect it, but I don't, yeah. I don't understand it. Apparently, he's worth $400 million. What? Yeah, apparently. That's what he I hasn't read. made a good film in, like... Oh, uh, Uncut Gems was. Oh, amazing. Uncut Gems was good. That actually, was awesome. that's true. And he's also. But made... it, it was a long period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's between... he made one of my favorite films. Probably my top twenty films is an. Adam Fifty Sun. First Dates. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a film called. Um... Oh my god, I've forgotten what it's called. One now. of his favorite films, he's listeners. Just... Oh, it's called Punch Drunk Love. Punch Drunk Love, right? By Paul Thomas Anderson, mm-hmm. and it is just—it's a masterpiece of a film. I have so, actually heard that's great. It's on my—I've got this. I, it's called the Brain Dump, and it's on my phone. It's a list of things I need to watch, and that is actually on there. It's so good, along with a million other things on there. It ju- it's, it's crazy. It shows how good an actor he, he actually is, and that he's got so much potential. Just Funny, pick, just just does pick like the wrong sh- film. Stupid voices is what he does, isn't it? He just sort of does his. Silly little voices in that. Anyway, enough Adam Sandler chat. Yeah, we were, we, were, we were doing pretty well about beer for three minutes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we were at the Dog and Bell last night and then we got up this morning. I stayed at Brad's and we were, I was going to say we were supposed to. We did film yeah. a new low broy. Low brow, low brow. Get it right. Mm, I mean, it's broy. Get it right. It's broy. Well, the, the pun doesn't work if it's low broy. Nope. 
Nope, but it so, doesn't know. mean that we can change the German language. Well, well I think it does. Oh, okay. <laughs> we haven't got any lowbrow merch yet. No, I was, I was looking. I mean, I can easily rattle out a T-shirt. I just didn't know if anyone would want to wear one. I think, I think, so, I think they might. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was going to do, because obviously I love the logo. It's super cool. Um, and then the little tagline. I was going to do the logo with the little tagline that just says, Tech Cheats for Beer Geeks under it it's a little strap line so i could put that out i could put that out we'll see we'll see how it flies we do have a new t-shirt out oh we do it is a pastiche of choose life but it's choose cask yeah man and we even adapted the lyrics uh for the descriptor yeah so we 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 basically uh i'm a big fan of the wham t-shirt from the 80s that they wore in some of their music videos Mm -hmm. um and that was by a fashion designer called Catherine hammett or something who did a lot of like political t-shirts basically and I've always been a fan of them and she said that she's happy for people to disseminate her work and basically rip it off so uh Johnny was like we should make a t-shirt uh for the cask ale campaign and and I thought I already had this idea about choose cask like it's an active decision we can all make to choose yeah, cask yeah when you go to a pub you can choose cask so I was like, it's perfect. The more you choose cast, the better the cast the better gets. It gets. It's the so, joy. That's it, man. But yeah, Johnny, I sent Johnny, because uh, obviously everyone knows Choose Life from the beginning of train spotting as well. Mm-hmm. So I sent him the massive, long, uh, Renton uh, quote, which is Choose Life, Choose a Flash Car and, you know, all the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. And within about 30 seconds, he'd written back an amazing... <laughs> beer version which i just thought was was awesome although one bit's a bit rude isn't it he said something about good head in it yeah but that that, that's good head on beer bradley come on we've been beer geeks long enough to stop laughing at that haven't we have we i don't know i thought it was a bit cheeky from you i was like (laughs) wow that's a bit close to the bone i mean i i literally hadn't even considered that it was uh (laughs) not suited him a um an innuendo. Double entendre. That Double was where my brain went. Double your away. entendre. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, but anyway, guys, it's now live yeah. on our merch we'll store. Put, put a link in the show notes. You can go buy a Choosecast t-shirt. I can guarantee you that me and Brad will be wearing those t-shirts very, very soon. In a Wham-style Christmas in a Wham video. Style Christmas video. Last Christmas, <laughs> I bought you some casks. We should, we should do a Christmas jumper this year. Can you yeah. design us a Christmas jumper? Maybe. So that people can wear it on Christmas Day and send us photos. And maybe we'll send... Uh, some kind of lovely merch to say thanks if, it, if we love the photo. Could be. Maybe that's could a little be. thing we could do. We'll have a think. We'll have a think about that one. We won't decide that on air. Um, where were we? Yes, lowbrow. So we were filming a new lowbrow which involved Brad drinking an 11% beer uh, very early in the morning. But actually we were reviewing gadgets. There wasn't a lot to do with, with beer but we've picked no. four amazing gadgets that you might want to buy yourself or your beer loving friend, yeah. partner, um, for this gifting Child, season. Child, grandparent, for this gifting season. You know, the season of gifts. It's great to to give, but it's better to receive. Right? Yep. So this is for you people buying gifts for other beer fans. Um, I genuinely think these four gadgets are incredible. Yep. Like, if I got them in my, as a stocking filler, I'd be absolutely made up. I mean, I, I have them now because I've got them. Yeah. But Johnny... Johnny, and you, know, you are like, made up. Look at you. I made, I'm absolutely made up. I'm, I'm absolutely hanging. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, honestly, there's some there's some gold. There's some real gold in there. Yeah, but there's two two five star crispy boy ratings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to give one of them six. Yeah, you, yeah, but that's not a thing. It's, it's like turning thing. up to eleven. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. Well, this this gadget turns up to eleven. Does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm glad you didn't put that in the video. I'd have had to have edited that. <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so we've been filming the next lowbrow, which obviously you guys are hopefully really excited about because it's a really cool playlist and it's nice when Brad leads a video, which is what you did last week as well. And we had lots of comments from uh, people yeah. saying, "Enjoy it when Brad leads a video." Fuck yeah, you! Yeah. But uh, well, I think it's just because <laughs> it's such a rarity. Johnny. Everyone <laughs> exactly. knows that you can do it. We're doing scarcity like... marketing, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. double double That's West it. Coast IPAs. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm like the rare, the the rare sort of thing. You're the annual get. release. You're the putty, the That's vintage it. ale. Maybe. That's it. I'm the vintage ale. Nice link. Yeah. Nice are, we, link. are we going to go? to the video now or have yeah, I done that on. yeah we, it was, it. I've made it less neat now by questioning it <laughs> but yeah let's talk about this week's video which was of course the finale of our Keep Cask Alive series sponsored by Fuller's uh, this episode was you know as close as we really got to full on sponsored content in that it was all about Fuller's Brewery and all about their annual release of the Vintage Ale which is an 8.5% barley wine that's hopped and malted 
slightly differently each year. And yeah. this year is a, an absolute corker. Probably one of my favourites in a while. Tasted absolutely banging, didn't it? Like, honestly amazing. Like, we, well, you know, in the video, we, we both liked that one. Mm -hmm. And was it the, I can't remember which was the other one that was the, the big hitter. Uh, well, we loved, we loved 2021 and 20. 15 yeah and then the 1997 was a real surprise at how good it was mm. uh, and actually we 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 do have a video in which we taste the 1997 coming in a couple of weeks so you'll learn all about that as well because we did film that us tasting the 1997 for the episode but then it was already running at 24 minutes and i was like it's not quite as relevant it's in bottle so it's not cask so we'll we'll save that for a separate episode i'm trying to think what i was doing in 1997 i think i was just we have been a teenager listening to Nirvana and I'd um, I just started secondary school. Oh shit! Yeah, that's maybe I was quite young school. then. I'm trying to think. Well, so you're you're what three years older than me? Yeah, so I would have only been no yeah. five years older than me. No. Yeah. Am I? I'm 34. You're 39. Fuck. So you'd have been you'd have been 16, mate. You'd have been. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Drinking underage in a pub. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I was drinking underage and uh, listening to yeah Radiohead. I wonder whether... Did OK Computer come out like that? Oh, it might have been 98. 97 or 98, I think. I remember being listening to OK Computer on my, my uh, Walkman, my uh, CD Walkman, when I was on holiday somewhere. What a cool dude. Somewhere hot. It was hot. I think I was in Tenerife or somewhere, and I just sat listening to OK Computer on did it, repeat. Did it blow your mind? It blew my tiny mind. Yeah. But also, everyone was like, why don't you sort of come out? I was, I was like, no, I'm listening to... Uh, the greatest record ever made right now so yeah leave me alone i mean and i want to be moody it's up there and, uh, in my mind yeah, yeah yeah well when i was 16 i thought it was the greatest yeah. thing ever i still think it is it, it is 34 it, it's pretty top 10 pretty for awesome. me it's pretty yeah. awesome yeah um we've got away from beer again How, oh yeah what were we doing in 1997 uh -huh. yes uh, we'd love to hear what you're doing in 1997. You could email craftbeerboys at gmail.com and we'll read it out. Or you could put it in our Patreon forum. You could join our Patreon from $1 a month and support what we do on the channel and get access to about 350 beer geeks who are awesome, awesome fun. Uh, and particularly the homebrewers have taught me a lot. So yeah, man. sign up to that. Um, and then you can say that's what you did in 2021. You joined the yeah. Craft Beer Channel Patreon. Beautiful. Um, back to Vintage Ale. So yeah, this video was all about the, the cask uh, version of that and the history of that beer and how we think that it's a I guess it's just a wonderful example of everything that's great about cask tradition and British brewing tradition mm. in that you know this year's has all new British hops which is something that not even um, sort of hypey New England brewers are doing in the UK even though those hops are definitely uh, of that quality and of that kind of um of those flavours. Yes. And that's what was really interesting about this beer, it was a barley wine with really juicy hops. Um, and it works so much better than I thought it was going to. I remember in that interview with Guy, when he said the hops, I was like, whew. Crazy. I'm, You're a crazy guy. You're yeah, a crazy guy. I'm not I'm not sure about this, mm. but it worked super fucking well. It's a really lovely beer. Um, obviously, a lot of that hop character is going to die out as you age it. So 2021 is one that I think you need to buy this year and drink, drink a bottle or two this year. Um, and of course, I age it out, it'll probably still be delicious. But... They all, what we learned in that tasting is they slowly become quite similar. Yeah. And the aging flavours dominate the recipe flavours that were put put in there. Definitely. Um, but they were all, I mean, the 1997 was delicious. I'm excited to put that video out there. It's kind of, kind of amazing that a 25-year-old beer can taste and look as good as it did. They're quite expensive as well, aren't they? They are over £600, I believe. <clears throat> yeah. A bottle of that, and they let us have one, um, which was, you know... <laughs> A pretty significant investment when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. They didn't let you take one, did they? they didn't no, they didn't let you take one home. Okay. No, no, no. No, no. There was talk of that, though. There was. I think that might be coming. I think... So. You reckon? I think uh, somebody maybe. said it and then somebody elbowed them away. Yeah, probably. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. give away this stuff. There's only a couple of hundred left, I think. Well, that's what they tell, that's what they tell us. It's, you probably go back in, in the Fuller's uh, vaults and it's like Indiana Jones when he... You know, they've got the crates. When the arc is just there. Yeah, yeah, it's just in a month. There's just like hundreds of 97 bottles in, in chromatic Turned crates. Away. Yeah, 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 definitely. Although when you crack it, it's 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 a lot more safe than the arc. Yeah, That yeah, didn't yeah. pan out so well for, for no. many of the Germans Mel involved melty in, face time. in that particular bottle share. It, might, it did melt my face a little bit, though, to be honest. It's, the 1997? Well, all of them after drinking. Metaphorically. Yeah, yeah, after drinking all of them, right. <laughs> I felt a bit melted. Yeah, and then we went to the pub and had it on cask, and oh. then several other beers, oh. all before dinner. 
God damn, it was That's a long day. Hard work, hard work. I know, yeah, we do work extremely hard for this. Um, so I hope you really enjoyed uh, that finale. Uh, we do still have one more, well, two more bits of content. A, that video in which we taste the 1997, but also um, part of the, the campaign with Fuller's also involves a podcast. Mm. And we are absolutely delighted to say that the person who we will have for that podcast, for our cask pod, podcast, yes, there we podcast. go, that's in the bank for when we uh, make it, um, is Ollie Smith. Richard Maidley. <laughs> oh. Ollie Smith. Okay, Ollie Smith. he'll do, he'll do. <laughs> Bit uh, more relevant than Richard Maidley. I thought we were getting the Alan Partridge, real life Alan Partridge, <laughs> that'd be amazing. Richard Maidley, I don't think he's a cask drinker. I don't know. No, probably not. He's I'm... very thin, isn't he? Not that you get fat if you drink cask, but... Are you spreading myths about cars <laughs> no, after five episodes no. of us trying to get rid of the myths? No, no, Jesus. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I don't <laughs> think he drinks a lot of beer. Oh. I think he's probably a gin man. I think he's probably a gin drinker, yeah. Or or like virgin blood man. Or he's the kind of person that goes into a supermarket and only buys half price wine. Oh, yeah. I reckon, yeah. Rich, I reckon Rich is tight, actually. <laughs> I reckon he's real stingy. Not like Ollie. Poor Judy. Not like Ollie. Ollie pays full whack for his wines. He certainly does. Um, so we're going to be talking to him. He's a big beer lover. He's done a TV show about beer in America um, and obviously a big wine lover. So we're going to be talking about his view of how cask can improve, how cask can grow its reputation, what he thinks of cask from outside of the beer industry. Um, and obviously we'll be talking to him about his amazing life and his amazing work because he's, he's one of my favourite uh, communicators about alcohol, not just wine, just alcohol in general, yeah. I think. The, the level of positivity and joy that he brings to a screen yeah. Um, and to a book and to Saturday Kitchen can't be underestimated he's got a very he if he was a dog yeah he'd be like a really excited puppy wouldn't he yeah, like a he would. Labrador puppy he would be he's just got so much dynamic energy in his yeah. voice and face whereas fantastic. you'd be like a <sighs> careful now border terrier maybe that was the border terrier last night wasn't it there was a, a border fight. terrier there last night yeah, yeah like a little ewok sort of hairy thing little old man meets ewok oh, yeah, a little yeah, old yeah. ewok a little old ewok yeah maybe more of a wookie i'm maybe hopefully more of a wookie than the ewok <laughs> ewoks are shit nobody likes ewoks no that was uh, that was a real low point and then obviously the three modern films came out and suddenly it looked like a high point <laughs> um so yes uh we've got some comments we've had lots of lovely comments thank you so much for all the positivity um We've been blown away by the response to this. And there was actually a great comment uh, from somebody who said that when you said you were doing a series about cask, I didn't know what you were going to be able to talk about. Turns out lots and sort of had their minds changed. Uh, but the comment I want to pick out is one from Phil Cole, um, who uh, commented yesterday with a great, a, a long comment. I'm not going to read all of it out. But he said, throughout this series, many points were well made. And it's great to see the enthusiasm for more involved. We'll be ending ending our tenancy in February after building an award winning real ale pub out of a rundown shell that's been that had been turned into a Chinese restaurant. Um, so Phil goes on to explain why that's happening and how financially to be a publican, it's extremely tough to focus on cask. You can't make any money from it. So if you're passionate about cask, it's kind of to the detriment of your business almost. Wow. Um, and, and that you are probably better off just selling a load of lines to AB InBev and making a much better margin. So I, I'm, I'm always very defensive of pubs when people go, oh, they've got shit beer there. You're like, but that probably means they're actually making money, so fair play to them. But what we were hoping is that this this, pla this playlist, this series, will hopefully get people in, get people drinking cars, get the throughput higher, improve the quality. We can improve the price of it. Um, the government, for everything it does wrong, um, has introduced the the draft relief as well, which I don't think it's going to mean that prices go down for cask beer, but I think it will mean it's maintained. Um, obviously, we've got the energy crisis, the HEV crisis, we've got Brexit, we've got COVID, all making it very hard to lower prices. But hopefully the government's done a good thing there. At the moment, it's only for 40 litres and bigger containers, uh, but I have heard off the record that's going to change to 30. So that's good news for keg as well. Um, so yeah, thank you for that comment, Phil. I recommend you guys go onto the onto the video and, and read that comment because it's really interesting. And I think Phil's probably relishing the fact he won't have to worry about cask anymore and he can just drink it in the places he knows does it well. But Phil's clearly done a great thing. Uh, Brad showed me a photo of Boris and Rishi Sunak at 4Pure. Uh, why are you showing me that? I got, so when you were doing your talk last night, my friends, uh, my friend Danny sent me this photo. Yeah. Um, of of uh, yeah, Boris 
Pulling the most Boris face I've ever seen. Lots of people thought it was photoshopped when that photo it's came so out. Rich. They thought that they put those silly faces yeah, on them yeah, both. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Like this, this photo is rife for a porno makeover, like Photoshop. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at those faces. They're terrible. Those faces. Yes, people are. Look at the use angle them. of that thing there. Oh yeah, that's unfortunate <laughs> for Rishi. I'll have to put a link to this photo now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Rishi and Boris <laughs> went to see Four Pure to celebrate all the good work they'd done for brewing without realising that they'd actually screwed over they, Four Pure they fucked it, yeah. <laughs> by uh, not making the relief available for 30 litre kegs. Couldn't but make it up, could Who you? gives a crap about Four Pure? They yeah. suck. Uh, but hopefully that will change. Um, but we do have that photo out of this mess to... Uh, every cloud has a silver lining. Um so yeah thank you Phil <laughs> going back to Phil thank you Phil for that comment really appreciate that um, and yeah hopefully this campaign is the start of something that's going to really help great publicans like you who looked after Cask actually make a profit for the um, for the hard work that you put in in fact he says halfway through the comment he says Cask craft knowledge is not valued and that's the issue and that's the exact thing we're trying to change both from a publican perspective and from a drinker perspective showing that cask is harder to do mm. and it's more delicious as a result and we should all be supporting it if we can um we should probably reflect on that series a little bit yeah i mean we, we did reflect on it at the end of the episode saying about how it kind of changed our lives but literally i choose cask more than keg at the moment and i won i wonder how long that's going to last but for sure it's changed my approach when i walk into a pub it has to right and i you know if if there's one thing that this does if you watch these videos and you just even just order one pint of cask where you wouldn't have done before, you are helping the change. Yeah. Um, it's, it, you know, this is a very, very special culture that's unique to this part of the world. And uh, we're, in da- we're, we're in serious danger of losing it. Yeah. Or, we, or it just becoming on. like a, a yeah, curiosity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. regional, like obviously it does amazingly well up north. But, you know, we're in danger in certain parts of, of the UK of people just sort of walking away from it, mm-hmm. which, which would be just a, a travesty, really. Yeah. Um, but all, the, the cards are stacked against it, like Phil has said here, you know, like it's harder yeah. to make a living, which is, you know, hopefully that will change as well with the kind of relief that they might get. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I think, yeah, that, you know, 5% is so minimal, which is a bit of a shame. It's going to be about 3p on the pint. Yeah. But what it means is, the cost isn't going to go up by 5p, which could further detriment um, sales of cask. Um, and I think, yeah, the, the answer to saving cask is drinking it. And the more you drink it, the better it gets. You know, it's such a wonderful way to fix a problem, to drink more and yeah. therefore make something better. So that's what we're hoping to do. And hopefully we'll, we'll do a series two, a series three, a series four. Um, and obviously we'll be covering our adventures, taking it to UNESCO, which will start in the new year. Um, so I'm, I'm going away to have a kid uh, well I'm not going anywhere to have it I'm going home to have a kid but I'll be taking some time off and then when we come back we'll hit the ground running if you want to be in on that campaign if you think you can help if you just want to hear the news um, then there is a link to sign up on the video and also I'll put that in the show notes as well so you can sign up to our mailing list and we'll be keeping you abreast of any changes any advances and any news that we get for that and indeed the Craft Beer channel in general yeah i mean yeah and uh, you know like if you want to get involved in your let's say in the legal profession or you're a politician or you know someone that is someone that's got some sway or got experience in campaign experience in campaign management yeah. if you're a, a kind of a, you know a creative agency or a marketing agency that could help us then we we don't we you know we're, we're we're starting out on this journey as two people um, without having ever done a campaign like this. Yeah, exactly. So, this is going to be a big learning process, which is yeah. going to make for a great video as we film the process, but it's going to make f- slow progress. <laughs> um, so yeah, please do get in touch, craftbeerboys at gmail.com. Um, if you think you can help us out, that'd be hugely appreciated. Uh, and that's all we have to say for this week. Um, so we'll be back next week. Next week's video is um, an interview with Daya, very excitingly. Um, in which we, we talk about the beer that I brewed with them for the release of my book, A Year in Beer, but also we, we have a catch-up about what's been happening to them since we went there in 2017 when it was way smaller, uh, it was all potential, and now it's very much potential 
fulfilled at that brewery. It's an amazing, amazing place. Um, so that's next week's video on Wednesday, and obviously we'll be back with a podcast next Friday. We've already recorded our next feature podcast, the next episode of The Bubble, and obviously we're chatting to Ollie soon as well. So there's loads of podcasts coming out too. Loads. We are spoiling you, Ambassador, <laughs> with all this, this Ferrero content. Nope, lost it. <laughs> And the podcast. <laughs> I'm just happy with you've come up with podcast. Yeah, podcast. It's all been worth it. That's it. it we've been productive today. Yeah. If nothing else, we came up with podcast. Great stuff. So there we go. Uh, all right, love and beer. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. The Bubble and Friday 5 p.m. podcasts are brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer channel. You can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum. A positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and homebrewing. Love and beer.